Hi, welcome to the Museum of Contemporary Art Chicago. My name is Jeremy. I'm the manager of school programs here at the MCA. Today, we're gonna to take a look at an exhibition called Water After All. To learn about this exhibition, we're going to try to think, move, and be more like water. The art we'll see in Water After All is contemporary art. Saying art is contemporary just means that it was made recently, in our time. Old historical art is special and important because through it we can learn about the past. But contemporary art is just as important because through it we can see our present in new ways. One of the early patrons of this museum, Gerald S. Elliott, said of contemporary art, what attracts me is a certain awesomeness and presence which relates to the spirit of our time, the human condition, the ups, the downs, the disruption, the chaos, the ambivalence. We're gonna to try to approach the art in this exhibition that way, experiencing it instead of learning about its history or the artist's biography, using it to learn more about ourselves, one another, and our world. We'll take a look at four distinct artworks in Water After All that mirror four different aspects of water. Take a look at Catherine Opie's photographs of Lake Michigan. These photographs depict the atmosphere around the lake during the four seasons. Each one is a different season. Look at this photograph. Can you tell which season it depicts? Is it fall, summer, winter, or spring? How would you even tell? Are there clues in the photograph that can tell you when this was shot? Now look at this photograph. How is it different? Can you tell which season it is? Are there certain cloud formations or weather characteristics that tell you something about which season this photograph depicts? Clouds have different moods just like people do. They can be stormy or fluffy or wispy or dark. Take a moment and think about your internal weather. How are you feeling today? If you had to describe that in weather terms, what would you say? Are you feeling bright and sunny? Or are you feeling like a crashing storm? Find a friend or a family member and share that with them. Tell them your internal weather forecast. Then, Talk together about how it might feel to be in that weather. So if you are the sun, what does it feel like for someone else to be experiencing the sun? Or if you're a cold, dark winter day, what does it feel like for someone to experience that? Have a conversation about your feelings and their effect while thinking about the weather. Take a look at Lynn Davis' photographs of icebergs. Icebergs are fragile and temporary fragments of monumental and timeless glaciers. What stands out to you about these photographs? What would it be like to be in the same place as these icebergs? Can you smell the air? Can you feel it? Try to really put yourself in the atmosphere with these things. Take a look at this photo. Soften your gaze and become mindful of your breath. Feel it as it comes in through your nose, down your throat, and moves through your body. Imagine each breath slowly turning you to ice. Feel the ice move from your lungs down toward your knees and up toward your shoulders. Allow that cool, freezing breath to radiate out the rest of your body. When that freezing layer hits your eyes, gently allow them to fall closed. 
Can you imagine being a glacier? They are massive, the result of snow compressing slowly over centuries. Breathe for 10 full, deep breaths, knowing that your body contains glaciers. The water that is now you was once part of an immense plate of ice, carving and shaping the earth. Take a look at Composition in Yellow and Gray by Judy Ledgerwood. Oceans are grand and terrifying, majestic and overwhelming. Looking at this painting can make you feel like you're caught in the sea itself. When you're on land, you have a mooring, a place to set up. Uh, on the ocean, you drift and wander with the waves wherever they carry you. As we look at this painting together, Let's try to lean into that a little bit. Allow the shapes and lines in this painting to carry your gaze throughout it. Move your body and try to really feel where the painting takes you. How does it feel when you're moving through the rougher parts? How does it feel when you're gliding over the lazy parts? Sometimes how we make art changes based on how we feel. So happy and excited painting can look a lot different than nervous or anxious or sad painting. The reverse can be true as well. How we make art can change how we feel. If we wanna feel more excited, maybe we make a big splashy painting. Um, if we want to feel more grounded, maybe we move slower or more meditatively. Let's try to embody how Judy Ledgerwood painted this painting. Take a look at it and use your hands or your arms or your body to move through the painting as if you were making it. Try to mirror some of the lines and the shapes, but also think about Judy Ledgerwood's energy or feeling while she was making this painting. Was she scared or sad or terrified or excited and full of energy? Move through the painting as if you were making and feeling at the same time. We're going to try to do the same thing, this time with a pen or a marker and some paper. So grab your favorite drawing tool, grab a piece of paper, and start making marks and lines. The point isn't to draw something. Don't try to draw water. Don't try to draw the ocean. Instead, feel your way through lines and movement until you make something. 
try to think about the emotions that you're having or the energy that you're experiencing and translate that to movement. It doesn't have to look like anything. The point is to have a making experience, to experience something new for yourself and to get inspired by simply the process of drawing. Look at Popel's installation of bottles of water. These bottles contain water poisoned by bad pipes in Flint, Michigan. It looks clean, but it's not. Some people can't reliably get access to clean water from the faucets in their home. Human actions, inaction, and infrastructure often pollute the water, making it dangerous. However, by the time water enters our bodies, it has usually been cleaned bottled and purified. Looking closely at these bottles, do they look ordinary, like something you'd find in the grocery store? Or is there anything strange? How would you know if it was unhealthy? Have you always had access to reliable, clean water? Imagine what life would be like if you didn't, or remember a time when you didn't. Free write for a few minutes about that scenario. Free writing is when you let your mind wander. It's not about creating a wonderful masterwork. It's about getting all your thoughts on paper. Imagine a day in your life without any water. What would it be like? Write for 10 minutes. Thank you for visiting the Museum of Contemporary Art and the exhibition Water After All. The MCA is always free for people 18 and under, students and teachers. If you'd like to learn more about the exhibitions or see some resources for learning, please visit mcachicago.org learn.